Hey guys, Philosopher here, and today I have my top 10 to invest in list for the month of December 2021. This is a list of the top 10 characters to invest in for the long term in this game. It is not a list of the best characters in the game. If it was, Gamora would be on the list. She's not on the list because she's still a very important character, but, you know, not a character that is you know, a, a long-term, a good long-term investment at this point. What the focus of this list is, is what are the characters that when you pour your gear into your gold, your training mats, all that stuff, your red stars, what are the characters that are going to hold for the long haul? Because this is really a resource management game. And the way of staying ahead of the curve is to put your resources, your gear, your gold, your training mats, your T4s, your red stars, all that stuff into the characters that are going to have a long shelf life. Now, this is generally always my most popular video uh, of the month. And I will just say, you know, when, when I look at last month's list, I think it holds up pretty well. And part of that is because we just don't have a lot of powerhouse characters coming out this month, but there are going to be some changes. And I'm going to talk, I use this as an opportunity to talk about some, some of the big meta changes in the game. One thing I will just say as a starting point is that one character that I'm not going to talk about here yet is Star-Lord T'Challa. And the reason why uh, is because he's not in the game yet. I, I don't feel comfortable putting characters on the list that I have not really played with extensively. I will say that I have used him on the test server. I think he's the only character from this patch that will potentially make it on the list. Okay. He's the only one that I would consider because he's got some really unique value as a standalone character because of the ability energy steal. He has a unique ability. He's the first character we've had in the game that steals ability energy. I think that's really cool and important because that's something that might have value uh, in the long run, just as a single character to counter certain characters. We'll talk more about that in the future. But what, what you're saying, I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, wait, Philosopher, what about the Web Warriors? I mean, we do have three of them in the game. You've used them. You showed us this team in Rage. You showed us the team on the test server as a full team. You showed us the team on, in Live, in Hybrids. Why is this team not on the top 10 to invest in? And I will just tell you. This team, in my opinion, is a great raid team. It's better than the Symbiotes as a bio raiding team. But that's really all it is. I don't think this is a very good war team. I don't really see it having value much outside of the context of raids. Now, could they potentially be a legendary unlock? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I don't, you know, I have no idea. I think that Scopely figures that stuff out when they... Uh, look and see how much people have bought their offers and they figure out what would be the uh, most money-making option for them, okay? But one thing I will just say is that in terms of standalone value, I don't see any of these characters leaping, be, you know, uh, leaping out to me as a character that's going to stand the test of time. In fact, this team has all been kind of designed to work together as a full team and there's not one character that stands out to me as like wow this is a super character that is going to stand on its own and be a plug and play character that even after you this isn't your bio raid solution it's going to have value so i think as a team if you don't have you know if you need this team right now uh to you know if you don't have a massive symbiotes team and you're you need uh, a stronger team for doom raids by all means this is definitely a very safe investment uh, from that perspective to do that job. But it is very much a team that is built for a specific job. Just like we have war offense teams, war defense teams. Now they have te characters with arena tag. These are characters, unlike some of those teams, like, you know, for example, you know, uh, the Eternals are arena characters, right? But they're also great in raid. They're also great in war. This team is more of a, they just do their role, uh, which is great, but it's not enough to be one of the top 10 investment in the game in fact they're a team that for a lot of players right now they don't even need because they have their symbiotes are getting them through their doom raids that this is a team that they'll build slowly over time so let's get to the to the list and the characters that i do think are the top 10 characters to invest in and this is essentially a list of what are the characters if you had all the let's say you had all the shards of all of the characters already and you just need to decide who should you gear up first 
Who would it be? I would not advise a new player who had all the shards to focus on Web Warriors first. I, I would suggest some of these other characters. Now, let's just, just to say who else is off this list. I decided to take Moon Dragon and Phylavel off the list. I do believe, other than Adam Warlock, they are the the characters on the Infinity Watch team that have the most standalone value. Uh, Moon Dragon because she, um, you know, is a, actually just a fantastic healer. Does a lot of really cool stuff you know she puts that defense down she has two separate heals despite the long cooldowns i do think that she is very viable with the secret avengers as a fourth or fifth but as a practical or i'd say fifth since kestrel's around but as a practical matter there are other viable fifths like shang chi even zemo i use on the second node and uh doom skill so I, I don't i just don't see her being all that vital of an investment she's just a part of an important team but no longer the top team infinity watch Philovel, very important for Gamma for, uh, 4.3 uh, for those Cree nodes, just really helps a lot there. Uh, but I don't think that's enough. That was one reason why I was keeping her here on the list. The other was because she does have some use in bio raids for people who didn't have all five symbiotes built up. But now that Web Warriors are around, that, that really knocks her off the list because I don't see her being important in bio raids anymore. Okay, there's just too many easily accessible characters because you at least have a couple easily accessible web warriors. So I just don't I don't see it. All right, let's go to our honorable mention. So uh, Shang-Chi, as I mentioned, is a character that is useful beyond um, his team. In other words, it's a t I don't generally encourage players to focus on war defense teams at all unless you're super into war and an endgame player. But Shang-Chi is a character who got, oh, uh, the, one of the devs said to us uh, in an interview that he was overtuned. That I think it was a mistake that they put his damage higher than they expected or that they intended to. And his damage is super high and he does healing and other stuff. So he's a great character for Doom Raids uh, in the skill section. He's a good fifth. I think over time he'll get out of that role. So he's not you know quite somebody to put in a top 10 to invest in, but he's a good character. I think he's got a kit that is plug and play with the healing and the turn, the turn meter removal and all the damage. He's going to be worthwhile uh, investing in, uh, you know, and we'll, we'll have a role for quite some time, even if heroes for hire fall off next on this list, lady death strike. I have lady death strike as an honorable mention, just because she really has great uh, value and tech notes for doom raid. It's just a, 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 a standalone character. I am sure sooner or later and probably sooner we're going to get a tech raid team at some point but uh until then she's great on her own and she's an important part of the number one war offense team as well <clears throat> maria hill is a really important part of the secret avenger team and i think that's a team um uh, that has more value outside of uh the game that particular game mode uh of raiding than let's say the web warriors do i do think secret avengers are just an all-around strong team and maria hill is an important part of that uh, she's also got the shield tag, which makes her useful in Gamma Raid. She's just a very good character overall. Now, Adam Warlock, I still have as an honorable mention. I do think that of all the Infinity Watch characters, he has the best kit for the long run. He's also, when you look at the legendaries, I'll just say as somebody who was racing and, you know, it was like third for DD5 uh, in the race for there. I mean, when I was looking at these legendaries, there are some real uh, sorry choices. There's just some really bad choices in this. There are not a lot of amazing legendaries. You know, he's clearly a top two legendary, and it's very hard for me to believe that there's going to be four more legendaries that are going to come out that are better than him to knock him off the list for DD6. In other words, right now, the top two legendaries are Omega Red and Adam Warlock. It's not really close. And... Um, I just, I, it's you know, they usually release like maybe a couple legendaries a year. So I'm sure you're, we're, I'll, I'll be considering him for DD6 as well. So I think that's a very safe investment there. He's just a good character on a good team as well, of course. And he's got a good kit. Really, one thing that you're going to find here, the reason that people are down on Adam Warlock and some of the other Mystic characters, is just there's so many good Mystic characters right now. And the way they've done raids is they've split it up so that it's done by origin, right? If Adam Warlock was a tech character, he'd be higher on this list. If he was a mutant, uh, you know, you know, or whatever, some other origin, a tech in particular, he'd be very high on the list. You know, obviously the fact, you know, being the sixth or seventh best mystic character for raids it no longer cuts it anymore. But I will just say that, you know, as just standing on his own, the kid is very, very valuable. And I, so I, I think 
you know, the glut of mystic characters won't last for forever. And while he is what he is for raids, I'm trying to look at the character for sort of the longevity of the character across game modes in general. As we get new raid teams, maybe a character won't be essential in raids, but, you know, he definitely has some value. So he's, he's an honorable mention. Now, the next honorable mention may surprise you. This is one that I really, this is one of my, the, the only character that I've knocked off the top 10 list this time, and that's Bishop. And Bishop has been on my top 10 list since I started doing this back in March. I started content creation back in March. I think I did it in March or April was my first one. And he's always been on the list because, you know, Bishop was a character who was the most important character on the, you know, the best mutant rating team. And I was never as high as, uh, as some people on Astonishing X-Men, but they were clearly uh, for their lifespan and they remain the best mutant rating team. But they are starting to get really long in the tooth and they're starting to, um, show their age. Uh, this team is, is struggles in Doom 2.3 and Difficulty 3. I mean, just, you know, this is probably now, the, the, you know, to me, the hardest section. I find it harder than tech uh, right now because I just, there are some RNG components to it uh, where certain days, you know, you can just struggle a little bit. And even my seven red star, you know, G15, in the gear tier 15 bishop uh, can get one shot. <laughs> and I'm not going all in and putting teal gear on him to make that slightly better. It's just the reality of the situation is um, I, I think that, you know, this team has not been out a year yet, but it's been out for, uh, you know, quite some time, many months. So once they make another round or so of money off of this, I wouldn't be surprised if we start getting some additional uh, uh, raid teams uh, that they want us to consider for the mutant section. So while Bishop is certainly somebody, he's the, he's the biggest, should be the biggest character in this team because he's both the tank and the damage dealer. So, you know, gearing him will get, you know, having a big Bishop will allow you to carry a much smaller team through Doom 1 and Doom 2 and so forth. We are starting to get to the point where I can see this team falling off quite a bit. Okay, now let's get to the top 10 list. And at number 10, we have a character that what is I think underrated, one of the more underrated characters in the game, and that is Sharon Carter. Now you may be saying, "Wait, underrated? Why? What do you think is so great about her philosopher?" Well, here's what I will say. First of all, Secret Avengers clearly the the best skill uh, sol rating solution. They're a legendary unlock for the most important legendary in the game right now, and she is a standalone character that even if Secret Avengers were no longer relevant, she would, on her own, have a lot of value. And, and one big reason why is this ability right here. She clears all positive effects in the primary target and stuns them. And she also has chain and ply slow and all that. But the, the stun and clearing all positive effects is huge. And here's the other part that's huge. Gain 5,000% extra focus against the primary target. She can. She will literally clear all the buffs and stun a Call Obsidian, Colossus, whatever. Name the character. She will stun them. And I have had situations where I've been advising newer players in the game, players who are trying to figure out a problem with Arena. You know, how do you beat this Arena team or whatever? Uh, I've suggested Sharon Carter and it's worked for them at times because just getting that fast stun out uh, can swing the battle for them, stunning a key character on the opposing team. I think her kit is is very good and underrated. Certainly was also very good for me in Dark Dimension 5. All right, and now the number nine best character to invest in is Silver Surfer, and this is going to be controversial. I get more, um, you know, n comments, nasty comments, questions about Silver Surfer than I do about any other character on my Red Star promotional list or, star, or top 10 to invest in list. And I stand by this 100%. And let me just tell you, first of all, <laughs> when you look at these characters, okay, if, if putting, aside, putting aside the origins for a second, if, if we were just judging the characters based on their kits and stats, this character would be higher on the list. I've docked the character quite a bit because he's mystic and therefore he's competing with all these other amazing mystic characters uh, for rating spots. But just on its own, this character is ridiculous. And I will tell you, 
you know, you know, when there are times where we will face a seven red star silver surfer in war and that will create huge problems for us. There's just enough RNG there because this character scales so well with red stars and gear. Uh, I, haven't you had the experience when you're raiding and doom raiding, you face one of these silver surfers and it'll just wipe your whole team. Like those are the biggest problem right now in doom raid. If you're in 2.3, they can just wipe you uh, and create a huge problem for you. And it's because they scale so well. This is a character that heals itself, that um, gets speed over time. So after just a couple, it gets faster and faster. So after just two or three turns, it becomes the fastest character in the game. Uh, this character, you know, cl essentially cleanses itself by throwing the debuffs back at the enemy. It, it steals buffs. Uh, and it's got one of these unique things is the only character in the game that clears charges. Um, it, it's got, of course, that turn one ability block. It's got a lot of amazing things about this character. Um, it's just a real powerhouse when it gets big. And so from my perspective, I, you know, I still think this character makes sense to invest in. Now, people will tell me, well, wait, wait, wait. Philosopher, I'm not using this character for raids. I only focus on raid teams. Okay, all I do is I just gear up my four raid teams and I'm done and he doesn't make the cut. And that's fair. And, and that's an approach to the game that I think has some validity depending on your situation, okay? <clears throat> but what I will say is this. If I was making a, a list of what characters I think will have value six months from now, eight months from now, which is sort of what I'm doing here, he's on the list. Because a lot of these characters you're going to invest in for raids aren't going to carry their value over time. You know, I, I would bet on him over a character that you might be investing in for raids like Shang-Chi uh, or uh, Lady Deathstrike or whatever because those characters are very good and you may need them for your raid right now and that's important for right now. But I think Silver Surfer is a safe investment. And while he doesn't have the peak right now that some of these other characters have that you really need right now for a raid, uh, he's not only such a difference maker in war, and he can be very good in raid. I mean, the new warriors plus Surfer plus a fifth, like Doom or war, Adam Warlock, have no problem clearing any of the raids. He is not, you know, a character that I think has more is more safer investment for the long run. And that's what this list is. It's not a list of the characters that are the best raid characters. It's a characters of the, this is a list of the best characters to invest in. All right. Speaking of raid characters, number eight, we have cloak and dagger. And I got to tell you, you know what you may ask yourself, like, wait, why is cloak and dagger? This is not fair. Why are cloak and dagger, uh, you know, together in one spot in the list. And they're, the answer is simple. They are worth investing in as a pair. I will just tell you right now, if you have the pair, go. you want to go hard on Cloak and Dagger and get them and make them your Mystic Rating team. If you don't have one or the other, I would not. I would figure out other options in Mystic. Uh, I actually tried out Dagger on her own. Once I, I misclicked on Adam Warlock for DD5, I was like, okay, I don't know if I'm going to have enough Miasma for Cloak. Let me see how Dagger does on her own. She's just not nearly as good. And she's the better, you know, so, you know, they can, can they do okay solo? Sure. Um, are, you know, but realistically, I don't think if you have, if you don't have both, I wouldn't go nearly as hard. They would separately, they would not be considered for the top 10 list, but as a pair, they are, but I have to take into account the fact there's two characters instead of one. That's one reason why they're a little lower on the list. Another reason why is that these characters are fantastic um, and they do have value elsewhere. They're great in war and they're just great characters overall. Um, but I will just say that as soon as, you know, as soon as you don't need that whole three, you know, three piece of them with death pool, I don't think that they sort of make it on their own. I mean, they're not, a, they're not going to be, be, they're never going to be an arena meta. It doesn't look like they just don't make the arena meta. I have Dormammu. They're not in my arena team. Um, and I don't really see, I think they're kind of, this is the peak of how, how important they are going to be in the game, which is very good. They're going to hold their value as long as the new warriors are the best mystic rating team, but there's a lot of great risk mystic characters. And, it, you know, as soon as there's some other shift there, then they're going to plummet. Okay. But they're very, very good characters and they've got really good standalone value. And I will just say when you have the high stars on them, like I have, I pulled the seven red stars on her. They're just the damage is absurd. I mean, this team is way, way stronger than Secret Avengers or New Warriors at the at the present time. I mean, if you have them geared and starred enough, they just it's just pressing buttons, essentially. Whether you use Eternals or not, 
uh, even if you don't use Eternals, I had no problem. One-shotting all the nodes, even on the first try. All right, now we're going to get number seven on this list. Is a, has a very different kind of character, Captain Sam. Now, I got you, you may be saying, wait, 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 Philosopher, why is it that Captain Sam is out in Cloak and Dagger? I mean, Captain Sam is not as important. Well, I will tell you something. If the Secret Avengers were no longer the top skill rating team, Captain Sam would still be a plug-and-play character. And if that team is no longer used in war, Captain Sam is getting a plug-and-play tank for a long time to come. He's got, he gives turn meter on his ultimate. He gives ability energy and a lot of other things on his, um, on his special. He's got uh, great resistance, great stats. <coughs> you can see here, obviously it's a seven red star gear tier 16, but you can see the health damage, et cetera. He's just, he's, he's got, he's got all the great stats, but even when the stats are not as amazing as they are now, this is a character that is going to stand the test of time. You know, Falcon is, it, for example, is a character we still use in war on war offense. Solo, outside of his team, because he gives that turn meter, which Captain Sam also gives. We also, you know, have, you know, used ca characters like Captain America past their prime because they gave out ability energy, right? And Star-Lord gave out ability energy. This is a character that does both, and he's very survivable and has great power creep stats, so I expect him to be useful solo for a long time, and that is why he's number seven on the list. Now let's go to number six on the list. The number six best character to invest in is Deathpool. Now I got to tell you, Deathpool is, you know, kind of got the best of all worlds here compared to some of the characters we've been talking about. Why, why is she a little higher? And I could see an argument for her even being fifth is because <clears throat> yes, she's part of the new warriors, which are the best mystic rating team. And, you know, and frankly, like Captain Sam, she's so good, she could be great outside of the team, right? We've all used her outside of the team at times, just like we use Captain Sam outside the team in like RTA because this, uh, the um, the attack out of turn, right? When Whenever an enemy de is dies, healing yourself and attacking the most injured enemy is very powerful. It's essentially in a turn-based game, you know, where turns are so important and it's all about who moves first. You know, to have a character that could just attack outside of her turn like this, it's like cutting in line. Like every other character is waiting in line for their turn, and she's just like attacking whenever she wants to, right? Whenever an, en the, whenever an enemy dies, she's attacking. Very powerful. She's got a lot of other really powerful abilities. Obviously, the ultimate super bomb attack. She, sp you know, spreads debuffs. She, he you know, turns her debuffs into healing. Just lots of really powerful abilities here. Super, super powerful character that's going to be valuable standalone after the new warriors go has a unique ability that you could see you being used for one shots, even, at, you know, at past your prime sort of the way I said that silver surfers got a unique ability with the, um, with the, uh, uh, removing charges. She's kind of got that one shot ability. She's got a lot going on that just make her sure a resilient character. She's got great stats. You can see the stats here, <clears throat> you know, just a very, very, very valuable character very worth investing in for the long run. No question. That's why she is the sixth best character on the list. All right. And now we've got the number five best character to invest in. And that is, you can see it right here, Omega Red. Now you may be, you may be wondering, wait, why is Omega Red not higher on this list? Maybe you think he should be higher, maybe lower. People I know who are super into raids might not be that excited about Omega Red, but um, MP others may say, wait, shouldn't he be higher on this list? Well, here's what I'll say. On, for Dark Dimension purposes alone, Omega Red deserves a spot on this list because he's got the legendary tag, and there are some real sorry legendaries in this game, uh, as I discussed earlier when I was discussing Adam Warlock. So he's a legendary, and he is by far the best legendary choice for Dark Dimension right now. Uh, you can go back and look at my videos. I did all the videos of my runs through Dark Dimension 5, and there's no question that he's better than everybody else. He was carrying. I mean, I joke that Shocker was the MVP of round one, uh, but look, he was carrying the team in, in, in both of the runs that I had, uh, both the regular and the time run. He's, he's amazing uh, in Dark Dimension because he's got the, um, uh, the health seal on his ultimate and on his special. And on his on his basics, it's just lots of health seal, which is amazing. Plus, he's the core member 
of the most important war offense team by a country mile, frankly, the most important war team. It's it's usually used on war offense, but it's just the best war team, period, by a very good margin. Now, I know that some of you prefer raids to war because the rewards are higher, and you're you're right about that. Uh, but he's a character who, and he, he does have niche value in raid in the mutant boss node. He can be useful, but... He's primarily a war character, but he's also a Dark Dimension character. And frankly, for Dark Dimension purposes, um, he is um, the best legendary. And there's no way that I would see not bringing him to DD6. Uh, so that's very safe investment as far as I'm concerned, because he's a very he's a guy that I'm going to want to have a tier 17, uh, most likely. OK, and and on top of that, like I said, you know, he's the linchpin to the most important war team in the game. So to the extent you care about war, he's a no-brainer. So to me, no-brainer investment, top 10 to invest in. Sure, he's actually in the top five, fifth Omega Red, no question. All right, now, I will actually tell you I considered, <clears throat> I considered moving him ahead of number four, but I'm keeping the number four guy in his spot. And yes, that is <clears throat> Dr. Doom. He was number one on my first list that I did top 10 to invest in. So that just gives you a sense of how well he has hold, held value. You know, I, the beginning of this year, it's the end of 2021 now. I got uh, Dr. Doom just in the very beginning of 2021. I was fourth person for to complete DD4. I, comp I finished it, I think, January 6th or something. And I remember at the time, a lot of people were like, eh, he doesn't seem that great. And, I, you know, I will tell you, this character is amazing. You will notice I put tier, gear tier 16 on him, teal gear. I didn't bring him to DD5, and I put tier, teal gear on him because he's so good. I use him everywhere. I use him all over the place. I use him in my arena team. I use him in the tech nodes in Doom. I use him in war. He is one of the most important war characters, right? If you're making a list of important war characters on their own, he'd be one of the top few, right? In raid, for tech, tech is the hardest section or maybe arguably the hardest section they had or mutant. But for tech, he's, you know, you know, you know, maybe the second most important character after Kestrel. And the fact that he has tech and mystic tags is great because a lot of newer players don't have a full tech team built or a mystic team built out. And so he gives them a lot of bang for their buck because if they gear Doom up, they can use him in two sections. You know, the new warriors plus Doom plus one of these fifths, whether it's Surfer or Adam Warlock or or eventually for some of you Dormammu. They're great choices, even if you, I mean, you don't need the Eternals to blow through uh, difficulty three uh, to uh, Doom 2.3. I had no problem one shotting everything without the Eternals. So I really think this character just does it all. And he's got a kit that's going to stand the test of time. It already has, both with those Doom bots that spawn every turn, which is just fantastic when you're going in PvE content. When you're not facing another human being, um, it gives the AI something to focus on. And this this ultimate where he is sent, he gets essentially six turns in a row. He creates three turns in a row for himself and three turns in a row for the ally with the highest damage in a turn based game. Getting six turns in a row is just super valuable. This character, people complained at the time he wasn't as great as Ultron in their mind. To me, this is a character that was designed very well to stand the test of time. I mean, here we are, you know, literally 12, this is 12 months after I got him or close enough. And he's still still number four on my top 10 to invest in list. And I literally, you know, brought the fifth star on it, put the fifth red star on him and brought him to gear tier 16. So I, you can see I'm, I follow my own advice. And now that comes to character number three on this list. And that is not surprisingly Kestrel. Okay. Now I got to tell you, this is the first time that Kestrel hasn't been top two. And last month was the first time she was not in the top one. And I, I will just say, that Kestrel is amazing and she is the two she is amazing for a number of different reasons. To me, there's this is almost there's almost like a teardrop here where after Kestrel, I think there's a sort of a teardrop in terms of safe of an, you know how safe the investment is. You know, Kestrel's got a lot of things going for her. Like Doom, she's got the two different tags, tech and skill. I think the fact that one of them isn't mystic now, right now, is a good, right? A good thing. It's very hard to see her getting displaced from her spot in the skill uh, skill nodes. I to me buying the seventh red star with gold promos on Keshel is the best investment of gold promos I think I've ever done. Uh, it's been such an, a no brainer investment for me. 
Uh, and she, I just have maxed her, as you can tell, I maxed her out completely. And the reason I done that is because she is a character who carries me in raids in both that she's the most important tech rating character. She's the most important skill rating character. And in war, she's one of the top war characters. I mean, just standalone characters. She's in the top five war characters. And in Dark Dimension, she did very well for me, too. She's less necessary there because there's tons and tons and tons of great cosmic characters. But nonetheless, she was great. So to me, this is a no-brainer character. And this is a character like, for example, uh, S Silver Surfer has got some unique components to her kit. She's the only character in the game <clears throat> that prevents summons and clones. And she's so important that like magic had to be designed around her because she was literally nerfing she nerfed a legendary in the game to be basically worthless against her uh, namely phoenix she, so she's just a hard counter to certain uh important characters in the team she really hurts characters like doom uh phoenix obviously uh dr mr sinister etc she's a certain character she just completely negates and then she's got some great stuff in her kit that very few other characters have she's one of the only characters, for example, who prevents characters from being revived when she attacks. So very, very, very powerful character. No-brainer, hard invest. So she's, she hasn't fallen so much. Is There's just been a few characters released that are better than her. Now, I got a very special character at number two, and this was a very, very difficult debate. And I'm not sure if I've gotten this one right. And I have is the number two character to invest in. I've got Dormammu. And I got to tell you, I really, really, really have d debated whether to put him one. <clears throat> and I will tell you, I did talk to Beta Ray Bill, who's my, uh, one of my alliance mates. I think he goes by Thanos, Th Thanos Giving or something, or, or something like that now in the game. Um, and his in-game name. He's one of the only other, there's only four of us in the game who have Dormammu. I did not evaluate Dormammu last month because I didn't have him at seven stars yet. I just hadn't had enough time playing with him. And I have spent the last month playing with Dormammu. I've used him in war a lot. I use him on my war defense, you know. For example, in arena, I use him. I use him. He's in my arena defense team and offense team. I use him in RTA. I, you know, I've used him in raids. And, the, and I've used him in Dark Dimension 5 on my second run. And here's what I'll say. Dormammu is absolutely amazing. He is an exceptional character, and I think he's the best character in the game right now. If you're just purely saying what's what's the most, <clears throat> the number one, like single best player character in the game, I think he's better than, let's say, Icarus. Because I think, you know, it's hard to tell. It's, the reason he's hard to evaluate, it's one of the big things he does <clears throat> is he, make, he gives you a second life for the other four characters. So... He's just, you're going to bring, let's say, an Icarus or whatever and Cersei with him or whoever else, Doom, whatever, and you get a second Doom and a second Icarus and a second. So it's just like, <clears throat> it's awesome. And it's designed to be an ability that scales as new characters come, right? So as, power, as, as there's power creep, then you're just going to get a second of the new hot character, right? So it's you could see the longevity of this character. So for the long run, I just see this character being so valuable. <clears throat> so to me... You know, this character is amazing. He holds on arena defense. I mean, they they fixed that. You know, they they clearly got the message that people were mad that Doom didn't hold on war defense. Um, and so they made it so Dormammu does. Okay, so Dormammu is the best arena character. And, you know, in raids. But the thing is, I docked him a little bit for two reasons. One is, you know, I because I, when I got Beta Ray's opinion, one, one thing Beta Ray's view was, was that... And I think it's a fair point. He said, you know, more Eternals will come out in the game. They'll make them better. And whereas Dormammu is kind of a standalone character, I think that's fair. I think also the fact that the Eternals are there means that he doesn't really have a spot in Doom Raids, which I, is a focus for many players. I will say that I think Dormammu plus either Silver Surfer or Adam Warlock or Doom is almost as good as the Eternals, but I'm using the Eternals. I think they're slightly better. I mean, it, it's... It's really a six to one half dozen or another because they all blow through the nodes. I'm not at a state of uh, Doom 2.3 is not hard enough for maxed out characters to not blow through the nodes. I will just say that's only for Mystic. For all the other ones, it's very hard. Mutant is can be a struggle. Tech can be a struggle. Bio can can be a struggle at times. 
you know, really, even skill, sometimes you get bad RNG. Mystic is just so overpowered that there's a huge combination of characters that can just, there are a whole, a whole bunch of combos of characters that blow through the nodes. And Dormammu is one of them. But the, the fact that he's Mystic, I think, hurts him. In other words, I think if this character was something else, skill or something, which I understand doesn't fit the character, uh, he, you know, doesn't fit who how the character design is or who the character is in the comics. But if he was something else, tech or something, he would certainly be um, number one. I think the fact that he's Mystic hurts him a little bit right now. The fact that he's Cosmic meant that for DD5, he was amazing when I brought him on my second run of DD5 because he gave me a second life. Like, he just he made it much easier. But, uh, you know, he wasn't necessary. But, look, he's he's the best character in the game right now. So, you know, is he as as is he the you know better investment than the Eternals? I think a six of one half dozen of another. Um, but he's such an obvious and I mean he's a great character. He's so worth investing in. So I I'll give him that. Now that doesn't mean the devs didn't totally screw up the DD five race. I did a whole video explaining why they did and giving you all my thoughts and everything on the race. Uh, which the whole the whole way they've done that is is garbage. But the character is great. <laughs> All right, so that brings us to the number one character on the list, and that is Icarus and Cersei, and that's another thing. I mean, they are kind of two characters combined into one. The reason I have him here is I don't really think, and let's say you're a character who just unlocks Cersei or something. I don't think you, I don't think these characters are worth going as hard in solo. In other words, if Cersei didn't exist in the game, I don't Icarus would not be number one. Okay. <laughs> On his own. They, they are definitely a pair. You, you gear them together. You use them together, right? You're never going to use them separately. They're fantastic characters. I mean, there's no question about it. And they've totally transformed the arena meta. And they're essentially in a spot where the only way you can beat them, well, I guess is to have, you have to have Dorma. You either have Dormammu or you just have your own Eternals, right? I mean, you know, I will say that there is an, an, a nice rock, paper, scissors element to the meta if you don't have Dormammu, which is that you know essentially um you know icarus and cersei you know you can use either the speed element with loki and emma and cable and then that'll beat the slower eternal scenes but then if you place that on defense it gets beaten by affinity watch so there's a there's an element of it but the whole arena meta now revolves around eternals and they're the first characters in this game that have an arena tag right an arena specific abilities and so the arena or dark dimension. So I will just say this team is, um, you know, very, very, very good in arena. They've, they've transformed the arena meta. They've transformed, you know, they're amazing in dark dimension. No question about that. And they are also the two, be the best fourth and fifth in mystic raids. So they're, they are, you know, at the apex of all game modes right now and uh, so i was actually going to put them behind dormammu because i'm just not sure about the longevity compared to him but i do think that beta ray has a good point that's why i try to get advice from other players and thoughts from other players is that there are going to be more eternals coming out eventually so then they'll get a whole new lease on life when you know ajak and some of the other ones <laughs> whoever it is get released uh there's a lot of eternals if you've watched the movie uh, there's all sorts of eternals out there that they can Give us characters based on. So I think these characters are a no-brainer upgrade. They're a no-brainer to go all in on. Uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of you've already upgraded Cersei uh, with Red Stars and so forth. Icarus is coming out soon, and you know, for two Red Star promos, I, he's he's an easy uh, character for me to suggest or promote to seven Red Stars. So this team, no-brainer, uh, no-brainer to be at the top of the list. I will say, though, Dormammu is clearly in their league as far as I'm concerned. All right, guys, if you like this video, smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel. If you got comments or questions, if you're angry or sad or happy, uh, which would be nice too, you can post those comments below or go to my Discord. That's linked below as well. Uh, you can also go to my Twitch stream, which is linked below. It's where I make these videos. And also, please consider purchasing Amazon coins with the link below that does support the channel supports the work i do and that punk does uh who does our infographics more importantly uh and that is a good thing to keep the uh keep everything rolling here i always want him to be making those infographics